welcome to our today's webinar on kubedb august 8 2022 the latest release features and improvements uh, this is pulap kanti bhumi i am a software engineer at appscot today i also have mohammad fahim abrar and md komal hassan two senior software engineers from kubedb team to discuss the whole branch of latest features and improvements i am going to discuss about the kubedb recommendation engine that is one of the new feature that is introduced in this release. So let's see the key features of kubedb recommendation engine. Uh, kubedb recommendation engine is a Kub uh, Kubernetes controller and currently it is a part of kubedb ops manager and runs inside the kubedb ops manager pod. Uh, it watches kubedb database resources and also inspects its associate resources like st uh, stateful set, pods, certificates, etc. periodically. Uh, by default, the period is after, uh, that means after one hour, it will inspect those resources and generate uh, rotate TLS and version upgrade, these two type of recommendation. It also generate same version upgrade recommendation, which is nothing but a special type of version upgrade recommendation that is pointing to the current uh, same version under some circumstances. Let's see the recommendation generation scenarios. The first scenario is about the TLS certificate lifespan uh, for the T uh, TLS enabled databases. So if the TLS certificate lifespan for the TLS uh, enabled databases is less than one month, that is the default value, or user set any custom value. So in those cases, the recommendation engine will generate a rotate TLS recommendation. Uh, it also generates version of the recommendation uh, in case the database has latest patch or major or minor version upgrade uh, available. You can see that we differentiate patch and major or minor version upgrade. So at a point of time, you may see two version upgrade recommendation in your cluster for same database resources. One may suggesting that to upgrade the patch version and another may suggest that to upgrading the minor or major version. Recommendation engine also suggests the always suggests the minimum possible version upgrade for both types of recommendation. While suggesting newer version, the recommendation engine also maintaining the version upgrade constraints. So user can safely upgrade to the suggested version and user uh, don't need to worry about the version compatibility after upgradation. KubeDB, uh, a KubeDB recommendation engine also generates same version upgrade recommendation in case there is a latest version available for database sidecar container images. KubeDB managed database runs sidecar container for monitoring or for maintaining database internal stuff like uh, finding leader in cluster, etc. The container runs alongside these types of containers runs alongside with the database containers in the same port. So when a new KubeDB version is released, it comes with new updated images for those sidecar containers. It will be effective for newly provisioned databases after upgrading the catalogs. But if user have already uh, provisioned database, in that case, user had to manually upgrade those sidecar image containers, or there is, a, or even there is a bug fix in case, or the image is retagged. In those cases, user also had to do the similar things. That means user had to manually upgrade the sidecar images and to uh, get the latest feature. But now, recommendation engine will generate a version of the recommendation pointing to the same version. So that while executing this recommendation, kubedb can upgrade the container's image version according to the latest image provided in the catalog. We have another use case for same version upgrade. If uh, we introduce new sidecar or duplicate an existing sidecar for a particular mode of a database, then user also don't need to think about the manual upgradation process. Recommendation engine will take care of these types of scenario as well and notify user by generating a same version upgrade recommendation with user friendly upgrade details. Now let's see a sample version upgrade recommendation that is uh, for the same version upgrade. So in this release, uh, there is a uh, sidecar container is removed uh, for, for a particular mode for a Postgres database. 
So when a Postgres database is running a standalone mode, so then there is a container called QDB PZ coordinator that is running previously, but currently if there is a no need to run uh, this container as a sidecar. So when user upgrade, uh, when user ha already had a uh, already has a Postgres database standalone database in his cluster, and when he upgrade to the uh, latest QDB, uh, then he uh, he might see a sample version upgrade recommendation with the given one. So in the in the description, it is saying that the same version upgrade is uh, required. Also, it is showing the upgrade details. That is the QDB Postgres init con, uh, init uh, image is upgraded from uh, version 0.4.0 to 0.5.0. It is also saying that the, there is a port that contains a container with image QDB PG coordinator version uh, 0.11 that is no longer needed. And in the right side, in the operation section, it contains the full YAML for the Postgres ops request. And in the recommender, recommender section, it is saying that the QDB uh, ops manager actually recommending to upgrade this version. And there is some rules and uh, to identify what is the status when the recommendation is going to be executed. And in the target section, there is the API version kind and name of the database. And let's see a sample version of the recommendation for a minor version of that uh, for any database, a QDB managed database. So it is almost similar that about the previous one. In the description, it is saying that the latest major or minor version is available, that it is recommending version upgrade from 4.2.3 to 4.4.6. And in the metadata and annotation section, it is saying that the database uh, actually uh, for whose version the recommendation is generated that, that uh, we contain that version in the annotation as well. And other parts, the operation recommender and target section is almost similar over the previous version. That means the open operation section, there is a MongoDB ops request full YAML. And in the target, it is says that it is a MongoDB database and which is name is MG test. Now let's see a sample rotate TLS recommendation YAML. Uh, in the description section of a rotate TLS recommendation, the, it is saying that the TLS certificate is going to be expired on a some date. So user can notify before, at least before or one month by default, uh, when the TLS certificate is actually going to be expired. So user can execute this recommendation uh, accordingly, uh, according to his or her need when uh, the traffic tends to be low uh, in the cluster. And other stuffs uh, in the operation section, there is also a MongoDB ops request that is a uh, type of rec reconfigured TLS. And in the target section, it, it contains the database name, kind and API group. So that's all from the QDB recommendation engine. And now I'm uh, requesting uh, Momo Fahim over to discuss about the other latest features and improvements. Hello everyone, I'm Pahim, Senior Software Engineer at Scott. Today we are talking about the new features and improvements of the Q latest QDB. So first, uh, let's talk about the QDB Health Checker. So in this release, we have added a new section called Health Checker under the spec section. It controls the behavior of the health checks. Previously, uh, if the users couldn't control the behavior of the health checks, but now uh, from this release, you can control the uh, health checker using the field called health checker under the spec. You can see a sample of the health checker YML here. So here you can see that there are four fields for period seconds, timeout seconds, failure threshold, and uh, disable write checks. And uh, the period seconds is for the interval between each health check iteration. So if you provide uh, ten, 10 seconds here, that means uh, each uh, health check will be performed in each 10 seconds. If you provide that timeout uh, uh, second as 10 seconds, that means that uh, there will be a timeout for each second, uh, each uh, health check for 10 seconds. So if a health check uh, cannot perform in uh, 10 seconds, that means uh, that health check will be considered as failed. There is also a field called a failure threshold. So it uh, the number of failures to mark the database is not ready. So if uh, your database has only two failures, and if you provide the failure, Threshold is three, then it won't be con considered uh, as not ready. 
and uh, there is also a field called uh, disable write check. By default, QDB checks for the uh, write in the database. But uh, if you don't want to perform write check for your database, then you can uh, disable it by providing true here. Now let's see how QDB health check works. It uh, changes the health check uh, database face uh, using the health checker. So first uh, it uh, checks the database CRO conditions. So there are two conditions, replica ready and accepting connections. Using these two conditions, uh, QDB operator decides the database faces. So first the uh, 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 operator checks that uh, the re replica ready condition is true. If it's true, then it uh, checks the accepting connection. If it finds the accepting connection is true, then it uh, says the database space is uh, ready. But uh, if it finds the replica ready condition as false, then it uh, checks for the accepting condition again. If it finds that accepting condition is true, then the phase is set to critical. That means only some replica is not ready, but uh, database can still be connected using uh, the database client. So we set the database phase as critical. But if the accepting connection phase uh, is false for uh, any of the cases, uh, they're not uh, um, only true or false of the replica ready, the database phase will be considered as not ready. In that phase, the database cannot be usable. You cannot create client. So now you're wondering what uh, about the replica ready and the accepting connections condition. So the replica ready condition uh, is generated in this way. So on each uh, stateful changes, the operator reconciles the stateful set. So if all the stateful sets are in red, then uh, the replica ready condition is uh, considered as true. But if it finds one of the pod or multiple of the pod sets not ready state, then it considers the replica ready as false. So now let's see the accepting connection conditions. Mm. So when the uh, health check runs for once, then uh, first it checks for the uh, that the, the database client can be created or not. If the database client can be created, then it checks that the using that client, the server can be pinged or not. If the server can be pinged uh, successfully, then it checks that the server can be written. If the servers can be written successfully, then it checks that if it's a, a cluster type database, like uh, it has primary and secondary, it checks that if there are multiple primary or not. If there are multiple, uh, if there are only one primary, then it uh, sets the accepting connection as true. That means all checks have passed, then it sets the accepting connection as true. But if any of these checks failed, so it checks that uh, then the failure threshold. So at a, a failure, uh, for example, if the database client cannot be created for two times, but you provide a failure threshold as three, then it uh, doesn't match the, this condition. So it just waits for the next health check. But if uh, the database client is, uh, cannot be created for three times and you also provided failure threshold as three, then it, it, this condition passes and uh, the accepting connection is set as false. So this way, accepting connection conditions and also the replica ready condition is uh, set from the operator. And uh, using those two conditions, uh, the QD operator says the database phase is ready, not ready and critical. So you can uh, control this behavior using this new health checker uh, field in the RSPIC. Now let's see the new ops request features. Uh, now we have a new field called apply under the spec. So using this field, you can control the execution of the data, uh, ops request. So if you provide the apply as if ready, that means uh, the ops request will only apply if the database is uh, in ready state. But if you want the uh, ops request to be applied irrespective of the database uh, phase, like if it's critical, it doesn't matter to you, then you can provide the apply field as always, then it won't check the database phase and it will apply no matter what. Also, we have uh, added a new phase for the ops request as skipped. <clears throat> So previously when there were uh, two vertical scaling ops request or the two horizontal scaling ops request for the same database, <clears throat> we, uh, we marked the previous uh, ones as pending and uh, applied the new one. 
but from this uh, release we have redesigned this if there are uh, more than uh, one obstacle for same type then other uh, the previous obstacles will be set as skipped because uh, the new one uh, is the latest uh, obstacle we will only apply that uh, the other obstacle will be marked as skipped we have also made a lot of changes in the auto scaler we have removed the dependency of kubernetes vertical pod auto scaler previously you have to uh, install the uh, kubernetes vertical pod auto scaler uh, to in, uh, use the kubedb auto scaler but uh, from now on uh, kubedb auto scaler uh, generates the recommendation from its own so you don't uh, need the kubernetes vertical pod auto scaler anymore we also redesigned the in memory database auto scaling so uh, now you can control the in memory storage auto scaling you can provide uh, two values use as threshold and a scaling factor so if you uh, want that uh, for example if you want uh, if your database is at 70% and you want that database to be scaled so uh, you can provide the use as threshold as 70% so when the auto scaler sees that the database uh, already reached 70% it will scale the uh database using the scaling factor so if your current database is 1 gb uh, 2 gb then you want it to be uh, scaled then the using this scaling factor uh, the 50 percent so another 1 gb will be uh, scaled so your in memory uh, new in memory storage will be 3 gb we have also added uh, new fields in the auto scalar crd to control the execution of the obstacles previously there was no way to control the obstacles that are created by the auto scaler so auto scaler creates vertical scaling obstacles and volume expansion obstacles to uh, scale the database so previously there was no way to control this so now there is a new field under the spec called obstacle options so using this obstacle options you can control the obstacles that are created by the uh, auto scaler so you can provide, for example, if you want the timeout to be 15 minutes. So when the vertical scaling obstacle uh, cannot complete cannot be completed in 15 minutes, that obstacle will be failed. So you can control that using the obstacle options. Also, you if you want uh, the database to be applied uh, irrespective of the database phase, like you you want the it critical or not, then you can use the apply field as uh, always. Also, you can use the uplock uh, max against and uh, op object counts to be as your desired values. Uh, you can use those uh, to set the readiness criteria for your obstacles. So that's all, all from my side. Now, come on. Hello, everyone. This is Kamal. So KubeDB, this release is uh, one of the most important release for us. There are few global changes for all databases and there are some database specific changes. Pulok and Fahim already talked about most of the changes and I will go through the rest of the changes. So one of the global change of KubeDB was adding image digest. So basically when the controller generated the resources like stateful set we are using the image with its digest value so when the image is changed or something happened to the image the recommender can accurately generate the recommendation based on the digest because we know when the when there is any change applied to the docker image the hash changed so now from now you will see the resources will have image with its digest in all the dbs over the QDB. another global change we have implemented which is support for custom volume and volume mounts so we have already found various requests from our customer that they need to mount some file or config map to the db container which is necessary for custom configuration or something like that so from now on, you can mount your own volume in the DB container in all DBs. It will provide the user more flexibility to use the database. 
Now, for Elasticsearch, we have added the support for Elasticsearch version 8 and open source version 1. So from now on, you can perform all ops requests such as upgrade, vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, TLS rotation, all of them for Elasticsearch version 8 and open source version 1. And another interesting feature we added is Elasticsearch dashboard version auto scene. So Elasticsearch dashboard is the native dashboard for the Elasticsearch such as when it comes to Elasticsearch, we support Kibana. When it comes to open source, we have open source dashboard. So when you upgrade the version of Elasticsearch or open source, this open Elasticsearch dashboard version will automatically sync with the database version. So you do not need to worry about the dashboard version. From Parcona XDB site, we have completely redesigned the operator. We have refactored most of the code base to support the latest QDB features and co while controlling the quality of the product. So now Parkona SDB support the Galera clustering, it supports failure recovery, it supports custom configuration. You can deploy the Parkona XDB using TLS and it also support the monitoring. For proxy SQL, we have support for new version, proxy SQL 2.3.2, which is the base OS is sent to us. And another interesting feature for proxy SQL is declarative configuration. Now user can write their configuration on one L, which will be applied to the proxy SQL when deployed. And another interesting feature is user synchronization with backend server. So for proxy SQL, if there is a backed by a MySQL server, you need to configure from proxy SQL site for each user on the server side. But from now, the operator will take care of it. You need to enable the auto synchronization to true, and the operator will automatically sync all of the user. If a user password is updated or user is removed in the meantime from the server side, the proxy school will automatically adjust those so that user need to don't do not need to worry about it at all. For MySQL site, we have added the support for InnoDB cluster semi-sync and read replica for, for the ops request. So if you are running a MySQL in those mode, you can now perform ops requests such as upgrade, scaling, TLS rotation, all of them in those mode too. And there's a little bug with custom op secret and th this was also fixed. Now you can provide your customized password for the admin user. For MariaDB, we have changed the service level selector and now, from now on, only the primary component of the Galera cluster will serve the request, which was more accurate. And from MariaDB, we have also updated the custom auth support secret, so user can deploy their MariaDB with their own authenticated secret. For Postgres, earlier we when we use a standalone cluster. There was a PG coordinator sidecar, which was not necessary. But from this release, if you are running a Postgres in a standalone mode, there will be no PG coordinator sidecar. So there will be only the Postgres container. For Redis, we have added support for three new versions, seven, six, and five. And various ops request improvement from now on and the ops request was refactored a lot to improve the quality of the ops request from now on you can perform various ops requests on the redis and it's now more stable and there are new versions too and all of this thing feature comes with this new version 2022 8 august of 8 and you can install it using this command or you can go to our QDB official website and all of those 
thing we discussed today, you can find it in this blog post we have released earlier. And yeah, in case you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, it seems uh, there have no question yet. So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Visit appschool.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day.